here. Welcome to All About Horses. My guest today is Gloria Hester. And we're going to be discussing uh, a topic that probably a lot of us had never heard of. I had never heard of it until uh, last year. And uh, Gloria came to the barn and did a clinic. And, uh, man, I was amazed at some of the stuff that, that happened. But it's called equine somatics. Yeah. And, Gloria, welcome to the show this morning. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. All right. So let's just jump right in. Um, tell the listeners, and of course I have experienced this, and we're going to get into some of, the, some of that stuff, but tell the listeners, what is equine somatics, and then what, what would it be used for, it, and how would you relate it to, um, let's say, um, like uh, what, what, EMRT, uh, um, you know, the muscle therapy, or um, chiropractic, you know, how okay. you kind of, okay. so, so people understand what, what, what we're talking about. Okay, well, that's a big question. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, equine, Hannah Somatics, was adapted from Somatics for Humans first, and so I know uh, most listeners probably have never heard of what Somatics is, so I would start with that okay. and then explain how it became adapted to the horse. Um Somatic work is work that um, is helping the person experience their movement from within, from a first-person experience, um, which gives a lot of feedback to the nervous system. So there are, princ there are somatic principles that we work with that will literally uh, work with the person or the horse's nervous system mm -hmm. so that their own nervous system can recognize where muscles are held chronically contracted, either from injury or from habitual use or adaptation mm -hmm. to an injury. Um, so that um, is kind of a short answer to, mm -hmm. I guess, where we could start with it. Yeah. And then the work uh, was adapted by horses by my teacher and uh, my mentor. Her name's Eleanor Criswell Hannah. Huh. And um, so that's how. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen a video of Eleanor and also, uh, and she's with a, a natural. Uh, or, or clinician, uh, Dennis Reese. Yes, yes. And I watched that video, and she tried to explain. Of course, you've done the clinic there, and it's the same thing. And, um, explain what the horse is going through, and it, it's like you're teaching the muscle to relax. Yes. You know, where it gets contracted, uh, horses, uh, re you know, like you said, does repetitive work. You know, your uh, barrel racers, your roping horses, uh, any... Actually, is, uh, is there a horse that it wouldn't be good for? No, no. And in fact, any animal with a vertebrae, right. <laughs> with the principles, would apply to them. So, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Um, how did you come in? How did you become interested in, in doing... Doing this work? Some, yeah. Um, I had grown up with horses. Uh -huh. My mom was a trainer, and um, so I spent a lot of my time in the barn. And sometimes there were as many as 50 horses there on the farm at a time. So I really did stay in the barn quite a bit and loved horses. And um, so I'd grown up with them. And then um, as an adult, I was uh, training in therapeutic yoga. And that's uh, what I do also is have a yoga background. Mm -hmm. And it was my yoga teachers that first told me uh, that Thomas Hanna's work had been adapted by Eleanor um, for horses. So uh, it just seemed like such a natural fit in those two worlds quickly came together for right. me once I started to, to study this. Mm -hmm. um, Given an experience that I've had, okay, had a little horse came to the barn and it was a uh, it was a roping horse, a little 14 two, not a real big big horse, but wide, stocky, muscular. And I was working with this horse and when I went to disengage his hindquarters, it could not step across. Mm -hmm. Is is like going, ask him to disengage to the right, his left foot could not step across in front of the right foot. And this was after your clinic there, and I said, okay, uh, maybe I know enough, or maybe I know enough to get me in trouble. <laughs> but I said, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. And, and so I, I did it just on the back legs. You know, I, I did the, all the movements, you know, the four movements, I'm going to call it, you know, the inside, the backwards, forward, outside. And then um, on both sides, and then I just let the horse relax. And I told the guy, I said, let's just let's talk about what we just did, and let's talk about the horse and, and you know, some mental things about the horse. And uh, after about five minutes, you know, of course, I was using that time to let the horse settle, right. sort of. And then I asked him to, to move over 
and he was kind of hesitant for at the you know at first he, he said I don't know if I can step across, but after a couple of times of doing that, the horse stepped through, and I and I just went whoa, it works. <laughs> <laughs> it does work. <laughs> yeah, but and the horses, um, I have seen them relax. They'll they'll drop their head, they'll lick and chew, and all, and it's like ah, they're saying thank you. Yeah, I was so annoying. tight. Yeah. 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 And when you mentioned, Jim, that the horse hesitated to step over after you'd worked with him, mm -hmm. uh, what was happening is his brain is actually organizing a good motor plan for movement, which is what we all do. So it's really bringing back the ability to organize the motor plan, mm -hmm. uh, which would create beautiful, graceful, fluid movements. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was talking to you earlier uh, about a horse that I have that has a, I don't know if it's a limp or gimp, it's mm -hmm. some type of movement on one side that is not as smooth as on the other side. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're going on a right circle, it, it may be different than going on a left circle. Yes. So somatics may be good for her to to uh, loosen up one side or, or something yes, like yes. that. Yes, if, if one side is tight, uh, mm -hmm. it can limit the ability to move as freely, obviously. But mm -hmm. yeah, it, it would be a great thing to work with that horse in a somatic mm -hmm. way. For example, if a horse can't walk in a straight line, you know, if we're asking that horse to walk in a straight line and he can't for any reason, uh, working, doing this work would be great for that horse because there are muscles that are being held tight somewhere that's stopping that horse from being able to move in a straight line. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but yeah, I was thinking about um, there was a when we did the clinic there, we did it on us first, mm -hmm. the, the human, yeah, human movement, and. Uh, you know, after we did, you know, of course, it was going to be a couple of hours, and, and uh, but it ended up being about four hours uh -huh. of doing this stuff on ourselves. And uh, I'm ashamed to say I haven't done it since, and, and, <laughs> and uh, um, I got to. I'm, I'm going to have to yeah. because, you know, doing my history of, of sports and, and, you know, the gym and, and all that, cause, uh, my joints, and, and of course, or, or very, um, I don't know how to say the word, they hurt. Uh -huh. As a horseman, I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> and and after doing that, you know, I got up and, and, and everybody there said, you can walk. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was so funny that, you know, we don't realize that we're in pain until we're not. That That's true. And same as the horse. They don't understand that, okay, they, they, they can't think logically what is happening and, and, and you know a lot of, a lot of times they can adjust themselves but in some instances they cannot. Uh, this is true for the human too. Um, yeah if you have someone to help facilitate your movement um, to re-educate your nervous system mm -hmm. through movement, then your own sensory motor system understands how to move again in a free and fluid way. Um, mm -hmm. Any movement that we make repetitively will leave us, uh, with a slightly contracted muscle that can vary from slight to extreme and it is like you're saying we can't always we don't always remember how to self-correct and neither do the horses uh, when we're born when the horses are born we have an innate um, ability to self-correct and mm -hmm. as time goes by we become less and less uh, conscious of our ability to self-correct mm -hmm. so we need someone to help facilitate in that way and then we're doing the work on our own and this work is designed that you would be uh, your own caregiver and your own horse's caregiver so that's one of the things that I think is so beautiful about it okay uh, we're going to take a break here and when we come back uh, I'm going to talk to Glory about maybe a, a possibility of a, of a clinic in this this coming spring at the barn and, and see if we can get some feedback from some people that um, uh, would be interested in, in this. So we'll be right back. All right, welcome back to All About Horses. We're talking with Gloria Hester um, about somatics with, e with, uh, with equine, with horses. And we're going to be talking about how the somatics can help people. And I guess it'd be a, be a joint venture, you know, kind of uh, horses and, and, and the person together. You know, exactly. Work with your horse, yes. and and one thing we haven't touched on is and is how doing somatics with a horse 
Well, well, enhance your relationship with that horse, the uh, trust issue with that horse. So it does. if you will elaborate on it that does. just a bit. Um, it's beautiful to see that. You can see um, from the horse's feedback and also the person, you know, it just it creates a lot of bonding and trust between the two. And it acts, actually uh, releases oxytocin, which is a chemical that helps to create good bonding between the two. Mm -hmm. so. so it helps the relaxation. Then, you know, the trust issue, uh, if you have someone that is kind of uh, apprehensive about, okay, like being at the hind foot of the horse. And the horse kind of apprehensive about someone being at the hind foot. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, it's a trust issue on both parties. Yes. So once you start doing this and, and the horse started relaxed, then he'll start trusting uh, you to yeah. actually be anywhere around him. It does create a really a beautiful dance. Yeah. It does. Yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. cool. And it's, it's funny you should mention a dance. <laughs> And just to give a, a little bit of personal stuff, I'm working on a, a, a choreography with a, oh. a, a dance with one of my horses. Um, and it's to a, to a, a song called um, um, I Have Nothing. Oh, and, people. yeah, a Whitney Houston song. And, and uh, my people tell me, said, you better hand out Kleenex. And it is going <laughs> to be good. And, and it's, it's going to be wonderful because it's going to show relationship. It's going to show trust. It's going to show bond. And if you've never seen anyone play with a horse like you play with a dog, mm -hmm. um, it, it blows me away. Mm -hmm. It just blows me away yeah. to, to have that relationship and that experience with, with a horse. Mm -hmm. Because it, you, you just, I don't know, it's, just, it's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful to, to see what's possible between the two. It is. And, and well, if you're open to it. Yeah, that's it. And especially us being a, a predator exactly. and their prey yeah. animal. Yeah. Breaking down that barrier. Mm -hmm. Uh, to have that relationship and, and the somatics uh, is a big step in that direction. It is, and that that's one thing I would I would like to share that um, when we work with a horse somatically, we we want to create an environment that's a quiet environment. Mm -hmm. Since the horse is a prey animal and we are as predators, mm -hmm. um, if we can create a quiet environment, it can actually develop a lot of trust, so that the horse can begin to sense from within. Um, that sets the groundwork for somatic work when the horse can begin to recognize through your own movements that you're not going to make any demands on his movement, but rather you create this um, atmosphere of allowing. So then the horse really can begin to sense. Mm -hmm. um, for any of us, if we anticipate pain, we will be guarded in our movements. It's only when we know that there's this freedom of movement that we are, we're, so we're not anticipating the pain, then that's when we can really be at liberty. Yeah. It's like when we have someone that's going, okay, for instance, help us stretch a hamstring. <laughs> okay, we, we get tired already because we feel like it's, okay, there's going to be pain coming down guard. the back of my leg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the horse has the same yes, they do. feeling, but they don't think logically you know they can't reason so they really don't know what what's going on i don't know that they can't reason um i think that as far as uh with the um with the hamstring mm -hmm. what i do know is that um this work is that that we're doing somatically is not stretching the right. muscle what we're doing is asking the horse to consciously voluntarily contract that muscle mm -hmm. so that uh, when he slowly comes out of it and that work would be uh, done repetitively a few times so that the horse can start to sense that he can feel the hamstring engaging he or she can feel the hamstring mm -hmm. engaging and then slowly release it and that is uh, what we're doing that's taking the control away from the cerebellum and giving it back to the sensory motor cortex which is uh, where that that uh, newfound freedom will come from and so um but as far as being able to reason um i think that they can and do reason i've uh, seen in sessions when i've worked with horses their uh, pasture mates or herd mates would stand and watch the work and i've actually had a mm -hmm. few rescue horses who would observe uh, while we were working with one horse and they would uh, do the same movements that we were doing during the session mm -hmm. so they were doing their own work they were watching yeah. us work and they were mimicking in their own bodies their right. own movement so they do have an yeah. alimimetic behavior yes they alimimetic will, behavior yeah yes. they will yeah. um, so they mimic can, they can learn yeah right yeah. they can learn and yeah. I've had horses who can open stall doors tricky oh, doors uh, so. <laughs> I have one I, okay. I have to nail the stall door too and yeah. actually he's pulled the nails out yeah. twice yeah they'll only let their so. friends out too, so yeah, they let yeah. their buddies out. With yeah, them, so. and as far as you know, go back to the reasoning. As far as that, you know, I think you know the big piece of plastic they can't. Oh, well, they can't recognize this. Oh yes, kill them. That, right. that kind of reasoning. Yeah, they you know, go into what they call the fear brain, right? Mm -hmm. 
Right, uh -huh. right, sir. Yeah, 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 startle response. Right, yeah. right. Which is what well, we're working to release in the horse, by the way. Yeah. In the muscular system, mm -hmm. um, certain muscles will engage and they will contract first in response to feeling afraid. Uh, the same is true for us, and those are the muscles that get habituated and bring us into what looks mm -hmm. like a posture of senility or an aged posture. So this work will release a sway back in a horse uh -huh. as well as a stooped over posture in a human. Yeah. So you don't have to get older. Oh. Yeah. Cool. It's like rolling the clock back. Yeah. Well, we're going to take another break. Uh, time is getting away here very quickly. We still want to get into uh, examples of what a session may be and, okay. and, and that kind of thing. All right. Welcome back to All About Horses. We are still speaking with Gloria Hester. Hi, Jeff. And, and uh, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, very quickly because the time is going to be getting away from us. Um, what We're talking about the clinics. What type of horses, what kind of horses would be uh, would benefit from, from a clinic like this? Um, any horse that startles easily would be uh, a good candidate to work with the horse. If you're comfortable being around horses who startle easily, mm -hmm. then uh, once you learn the principles of this work, it can be a huge benefit for them. Um, because the muscles that are held contracted when a horse is frightened, those horse, that pattern gets habituated. So those horses are constantly getting feedback to the brain to be afraid. So what um, a relaxed horse uh, might see as non-threatening, a horse who's already contracted in those uh, abdominal muscles and uh, adductor muscles, then they will be a lot more likely to go into, like, a, to react in a spook, and to mm -hmm. be a horse flight spooky. Mode. Yeah, yeah, flight mode, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also horses um, who've had injury, if they've had an injury and they've had to adapt to that injury, then they can have um, muscles that are holding uh, chronic patterns of pain, not only from the injury but also from the adaptation. Uh, that an asymmetry can get developed, can become developed in the horse's body. So this work can help to release all of those things, and this is um, what the owner can learn. How to, this is what the owner can learn today mm -hmm. for the horse. So it's a hands-on uh, clinic. You're actually teaching the owner of the horse. Yes, through movement. Uh -huh. Right mm -hmm. uh, to work with their horse, and yes. then you'll work with the horse. You're demonstrating, or yes. work with a horse yes. demonstrating. Right. Uh, we usually have a horse to demonstrate with. Right. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Give people a, an example of what a session may be like. You know, from from I know we talked about the environment yes. being a quiet. From the uh, right. Mm -hmm. um, well, the way uh, we would want to, I usually I like to create a group dynamic so that there's not really um, too much of a hierarchy, um, so that people can really learn. Mm -hmm. um, we would observe the horse in movement. And um, because of my training, I can help people begin to see in a new way. And that's really one of the things I would like to do is uh, begin to see, oh, this horse is not uh, just nosed out for no apparent reason, or this horse is not, you know, high-headed uh, simply. But it may be confirmation, but it may not be. It may be that he's being held in that mm -hmm. uh, pattern. So during a session, we take some time to assess and uh, just watch the horse in movement and also I like to teach owners how to learn to touch the horse in a way that they can begin to understand uh, where areas may be contracted in the horse's mm -hmm. body and another thing that that will do is it will help the horse begin to understand that we're here for something different than what they may have experienced before yeah. so it sets up a good uh, groundwork to begin working with the horse somatically and that um, involves particular movements um, once we've assessed on a broad base or I'm standing on a narrow base, I am holding my head high. I don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So then the change happens from within. Yeah. In these clinics, um, how many horses do you allow to participate? Or, or is there... That, it varies. It varies yeah. mm -hmm, just according to what the facility can, okay. can hold. Yeah. Yep. Um, also, uh, one thing I'd like to add is that when a horse is new to a, a uh, relationship. When you have a horse that uh, you're a new owner, this would be a great thing to bring mm -hmm. in uh, to create a wonderful partnership between the two of you. Mm -hmm. um, if you've just gotten a new horse, yeah. uh, for example, if you get a horse for Christmas, then yeah. this you'd want to learn about this work. Yeah, this this uh, helps uh, people uh, to start understanding that horses are nonverbal. Yes, uh, they communicate, and they understand. She was telling me the other day, she said, I saw you doing things with your horse. You weren't verbalizing. You were using hand signals. Mm -hmm. And 
she said, it's just like I speak with deaf people. Mm, yes. I said, well, it, it kind of is. You know, it, it's hand gestures or, or posturing or, or something like that. And we have to understand that the horse doesn't understand verbal. Now, a lot of people say, well, my horse is voice command. Well, I always tell people, what is your body doing when you do the voice command? You know, when, you, when, you, when, you say, yeah. when you say, whoa, to a horse, what is your body doing first? Yeah, your body's speaking louder than your words. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, they can learn verbal commands. You know, they can learn, you know, learn to stop the same media. You know, it, it's, not a, it's not the English language. You know, they don't know that language. They know nonverbal communication cues. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the, an example, I think a picture of that would be a, um, a horse who's dancing freely. I think that's why it's so moving to see that. We understand visual. Right. So when you see a horse who's dancing because they feel great, um, some of my roping horse clients out west have told me that their horses dance um, after they've had a session when they go to do their work now. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really rewarding to hear. So we do understand that when we see a person who's elated, we get elated as well. We become very excited, and we may not yeah. even know why. We're just uh, mirroring them. Yeah, and and you said that our horses are our mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yes, it, it's kind of kind of funny how we understand that. But I have I work with a bunch of horses and, and a bunch of students, and and I'm going to tell you that the students that are really putting and emphasis and putting a an effort I've seen changes in both mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it, it's just amazing what the horse does for, for humans mm -hmm. they have such a big energy and I've experienced even had the privilege of experiencing mm -hmm. um, compassion from a horse he saw that yeah. I was a little upset and he really came and they, he they really will. came and gave me a yeah. hug yeah they, <laughs> I they will yeah it was yeah. precious yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us today. I hope you've enjoyed, uh, Gloria, being here today, and thank you for being here. Thank you. I uh, hope you got some good information. And, and, again, we're going to be talking about a clinic on with somatics in uh, the spring. Yes. And if you're interested in uh, more information or um, attending the clinic, uh, send me an email at jim at jimswanner.com, and uh, Gloria and I will get together and, and see what we need to do to get you the information there. Okay. Thank you again for being being here today and i like to ask the people to visit our sponsors and tell them you appreciate them being a sponsor on all about horses